How's it going guys? Today I wanted to talk to you all about RuneScape Mobile and whether Jagex has made a big mistake with how they've gone about releasing this. Also we're going to be mentioning about iOS's release date and also going over ways that RuneScape Mobile might be able to be improved and just sort of discussing it as a full topic. So if you think these topics sound interesting then make sure to stick around also don't forget to subscribe because there's gonna be a lot more videos like this in the future and we're also really gaining on that thousand subs so if you enjoy my content and feel like helping me out in getting to a thousand then drop a sub and just become one of the first 1000 people who are subscribed to my channel well anyway let's get on to the topics the first thing that I wanted to talk about was the Jagex make a big mistake with how they've released RuneScape Mobile. Now, old school RuneScape went really well, as I'm sure a lot of you might be aware. That brought a lot of players to the game and the complete, like, total player count jumped and spiked to, I believe, the highest it's actually been in years. So, that's absolutely amazing. Now, with RuneScape 3, um, it... <laughs> Releasing it only to Android, I feel like was one big mistake as well. I understand that obviously iOS, it's not that simple. Apple are very picky with what they want to put on the App Store and RuneScape has to work around that. And once the product is fully finished, then they'll probably be able to get a release date, which I understand is coming fairly soon, but we'll talk about that later. However, only releasing this to Android has, I feel, made quite a lot of people who are stuck on iOS. Obviously, there's a lot of people who use iPhones. They all haven't been able to join the game. Now, I know a lot of people have been asking me about this on my videos and asking about iOS release date. I've even had a few people say that they're just not bothered anymore. They've been waiting for so long and other people have been able to play and they just feel like they're just might as well go and play other games. And obviously, a lot of other MMOs have come out for mobile, and there's a lot of other projects in the works. And I feel like RuneScape really needs to get a move on and get into iOS to capture those players before they go and play the new Diablo release or Black Desert Mobile even. And these are all things that Jagex really needs to be thinking about. They might be thinking about it, but it's definitely gonna be sort of a race to capture the majority of the market because MMORPGs on mobile, let's be honest, are pretty trash apart from RuneScape. There's just, that's pretty much the only MMORPG that I found that isn't complete enough to pay to win and isn't an autoplay piece of crap. So it's definitely a market that if they grab it now and don't miss it, then they don't want to miss out on it, basically. So looking at the fact that obviously it's not their fault, probably, that iOS won't allow them to release it straight away, but I feel like releasing it on Android before releasing it on iOS to everybody has kind of been a bit of a mistake just because it's made a lot of people realize that, well, why wait? Why not just go and join other games? Hopefully those people will come and try RuneScape when it comes out on mobile and hopefully they stick around. Anyway, the other thing that I wanted to mention about the mistake they probably have made, and to be honest, in fact, no, this isn't a probably, this is a definitely 100% mistake that they have made. And there's a lot of players who wanted to play this and try it out as a brand new game. Now, even if they had Android, they wanted to download it, but they couldn't log in because you'd have to be a member. You have to be a member to log into any worlds on the mobile version of RuneScape 3. You can't make a free-to-play account and then log in. You have to do that on the desktop, make yourself a member, and then you can log in on mobile. Now, the issue with this is a lot of people who were potentially new players to the game have downloaded it and launched the game and then been met with oh by the way you have to pay seven pounds to be even able to play this game and if you don't like it then you know tough shit you're going to be stuck with it and you've just spent seven pounds now for a mobile game seven pounds to buy a game considering most are free and even though this game says it's free it's not for people who don't already have an account obviously they could get that in-game money by grinding away on a pc or trying the game on a pc but a lot of people who are playing mobile games don't have a PC to play on. A lot of people have commented on my videos and said, "Is why isn't this free to play? Why can't I play it? It just says I need to be a member. Is there any way to do it otherwise? I don't have a PC. And then I've never heard from them people again because they've probably just gone, well, I'm not paying for it, so let's go on to another game. So that's a lot of potential players missed. Whereas if on release, they had just made it that you can log in as a free-to-play player. It doesn't make sense that they wouldn't allow that, seeing as there's not a limited cap on downloads, and you can play free-to-play on the main client, so why not? 
people would have stayed. It takes probably half an hour to an hour for people to get hooked into this game. I've introduced a couple of friends myself recently, and they got onto Turiel Island, and that was it. They were hooked. They were like, oh my god, this game's polished. This game is set up perfectly. They've put a lot of thought into it. Of course they have. It's a freaking old game. They're supporting it still. They're updating it still. They're making sure this game is polished and good for people to join. And they made the tutorial so much better. It makes learning the game so much easier. So why Jagex has made RuneScape Mobile only for members at the moment is just above me. I understand that eventually on release it will be free to play as well, but they have probably missed out on so many people who have just scrolled through the App Store, found it, downloaded it, tried it out, which they could have been absolutely hooked on it just because of how the game works. And then they've just not been able to log in. They've deleted it and they're never going to think to like re-download it and try it again at a later date. So hopefully they'll put out some advertising or something when it is released and hopefully it does get pushed and promoted, but we'll have to see how that turns out. Anyway, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was the iOS release date. So iOS release date, is there very much that we've been told? Well, we know it's coming soon, but we don't have a specific date. We know that they've mentioned it and they've said that yes, it is definitely still in the works and it definitely is still coming, but... For as far as we know, the only thing they've told us is at some point in 2020. So at some point in this year, people on iOS will be able to play this, but it's not very specific. And like I said, hopefully it's not too late. I could have sworn there was a tweet put out at some point that it was coming quite soon and it wasn't far away, but I can't seem to find that tweet anymore. Maybe they've taken it down. I'm not sure, but hopefully if they have taken it down, that doesn't mean that it's been delayed even further. Hopefully it does come out soon because the more people on this game, the better. So while I still wanted to go over improvements for Inkscape Mobile and maybe that's still a little bit negative, I did want to talk about something a bit more positive now. And that is the fact that Runescape Mobile is actually incredibly good. It, they're doing a really good job of it. And obviously it's still in beta and the game itself runs absolutely amazingly. On my phone I still get max FPS which is 60. The game is locked at 60 and it does run at that consistently and doesn't drop anywhere below that whatsoever. So as for optimization, it's absolutely brilliant. The graphics look just more or less identical to the game, as you can see, because this footage is all RuneScape mobile footage. And also, as you've been watching me do Telos, you can tell that you can do absolutely anything in this game. There's not anything that you can't do once you've done a bit of practice. I do racks, I do necks, I do Telos, really just all the time. Well, that's a lie. Telos, not all the time. I, uh... I want to, but it's a lot of practice and frustration. Well, you can still do it, and I would recommend that you guys do try it all out. They've done an absolutely amazing job for skilling, and you, I use it for questing. I don't, If I'm going to do a quest, I won't go on the main client and do quests in that way. I'll sit down on my couch, chuck on a movie in the background, and then do a quest that way. Listen to some music, just chill out. Don't sit in my computer and do it that way. If you want a break from your PC, but you still want to play RuneScape and be efficient, then AFK on your phone. They've made it absolutely brilliant, and to be honest, I can't really critique them on that. That being said, the negatives, the last negative, in fact, that I wanted to mention was just a few things that they could do to improve it. As you may have noticed while the Teller footage has been playing in the background, the UI is a bit of a mess. And when I say it's a bit of a mess, it's a disaster. It's a complete and utter disaster, really. So... Basically, the map is a rectangle, which is pointless because you can't actually click further than you can see anyway. So a lot of the time, I even just make myself use the screen to click wherever I'm moving because your map doesn't let you go any further than you can click already. However, that's not the only thing. If you could possibly look around the outside of the screen, you'll see there's quite a lot of dead, empty space. I've mentioned this in a previous video. They could just sort of move things to the edge a little bit more or just sort of scale them down a little bit and then you could fit a lot more in there. If it would be nice if we could have maybe another five buttons above the health bar or even if they just gave you five more circles that you could drag onto your screen at will, take them off, put them on, things like that. Obviously, I don't make games, I don't understand the coding of it, and whether that's something that they can do or not is, you know, maybe a lot of work, maybe not worth it. There could be reasons, but as for the empty space and stuff, they could utilise that probably quite a bit more. I don't see why they have to have all the dead space. Ideally, what I would like to see with the UI is the sort of customization that the main game has. Obviously, it'll never be that good, but if I could at least sort of drag around my ability circles a bit, or drag around 
anything that sort of goes around like health bars and buff bars, if I could move them myself, then I would be able to find better places for them in a heartbeat because I'd put my buff bar just above my health. I would put the Talos health thing. I'd only have one. So when you've got the big one at the top of the screen, but then you've also got the one that floats above his head, it's not, it's not fun. You've got so much on the screen and you can't click through it and it's just an absolute mess. So having a bit more customization that I could do myself or you guys could do for yourselves would probably help you out a lot. And really, it would probably reduce a lot of stress that JGEX have because then they don't have to please everybody. People can put them however they want to have them. As long as they've got the baseline, then surely freeing them up is something that hopefully they will do in the future. Now, I'm not bashing on the game. I just said it was really good and I play it all the time on my phone and probably more on mobile than on PC. So really my only reasons for mentioning all of these and explaining it as I have is because I hope that they take it into account while they're doing their beta and improving the game and maybe put them into use and make it that much better just by doing a little bit of user interface customization for ourselves. Now, in saying that, Things like disconnects and lag when you're doing things like Telos or Vindicta have seemed to have all gone because in the past I couldn't even go into Telos without the beams completely lagging out my phone and that carried across other people. It wasn't just on my phone, it was the game itself. So they've cleared that up, they're chasing it up and the UI is a lot tidier than it used to be. They're obviously putting a lot of time and effort into it so that's brilliant to see. So good one for that JX. Well really that's all I wanted to mention about sort of the UI improvements and all that sort of stuff. So that's pretty much gonna bring us to the end of the video. This has been a very different style of video and if you enjoyed it, let me know. If it was something that kind of you wasn't really paying attention, then also let me know on that as well because I want to know whether I should do things like this in the future or not, discussions sort of stuff. However, if you did enjoy it, then make sure to like it and it'll get suggested for the people. Also subscribe because we are closing on that 1000 subscriber mark. If I could reach that within my first year, that would be an absolute dream and you guys are making it come true. So I appreciate any of you guys that want to be a part of that. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for listening and hopefully RuneScape Mobile does get some improvements. Hopefully iOS comes soon and hopefully free to play comes to it because people want to play this game free to play at first. Anyway, as always, I will see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye.